Hello, my fellow stylophiles. Welcome to another pen review video here on The Pen Habit. I'm really glad to have you back. Now, normally I say pen review. This is, it is a review, but it's also a review of a pen that's not readily available and out of the price range of most normal, sane people. So um, know that going into this review, this is more of kind of like a uh, an informational video and less of a, I have to have this pen video because while you can maybe still get it, it'll be really tricky and super expensive. So just kind of give you that heads up. Anyway, if you know my, my taste preferences, you know what I like, you know that my favorite pen is from a company called Classic Pens. It's called the Classic Pens LB5. This was a very limited edition pen based on the Sailor King of Pen model made out of a very special diffusion bonded acrylic. Now, this, um, this pen is very difficult to find and super expensive. And I've talked about it quite a bit in the past. Well, this is another pen by the same company. This is a Classic Pens LB3. It's kind of a smaller version of the LB5, but it's a very, very special pen. So it comes in this white box and the top comes off and inside you've got the, the Classic Pen Certificate of Authenticity and the number. There are only a hundred of these that were made and some names here. I'll talk about the names in just a second. Then inside you've got this kind of faux snakeskin box in blue with the Classic Pens logo stamped across the top. And then inside we come to the pen. Now, this pen doesn't show off real well on the inside the way it is right now. So let me pull it out and show you why this is such a special pen. Now, the LB3's full name is the Classic Pens LB3 Jupiter. And the reason it is the LB3 Jupiter is because this pen has a really quite an amazing finish to it. So this is made of the same blue diffusion bonded acrylic that the blue LB5 is made from. Now this is a, it's the blue in particular is kind of hard to see. Also, hopefully the photos will show it off and I'll try to color correct and, and light correct this to make it a little more visible. But the, it's made of layers of this dark blue material with a little bit of translucence or not translucence, but chatoyance and shimmer in here. Now, each one of these pens is then taken by the, the artist Paul Rossi, who is well known in the fountain pen community as doing uh, a lot of really high-end pens, really beautiful work, and he inlays all of this material. So you'll notice that there are, first of all, the thing that stands out is the Jupiter made of the red uh, diffusion bonded acrylic with a little white acrylic inlaid into it as well, and a yellow here for one of the moons, and another white here for another moon blue here for a moon. And then around the pen, you've got gold and silver inlaid into the pen as well. So all of the gold, it's um, 24 karat gold that is inlaid into the pen uh, is in the shape of different constellations. And then all of the, the rest of the star field is filled out with silver. It's really a beautiful pen. No pen is exactly alike. And as I mentioned earlier, there were only a hundred of these made. It's really quite a neat work of art, not something you're going to find in every pen. Um, really quite, quite a lovely finish, I think. And if you're into space, it's really cool. So from a more in-depth design perspective, you've got the, the rounded finial here and then the clip uh, attaches to the barrel that way. The clip is a little weak feeling. That's one area that I just, I don't love the clip on this. It feels like it could get bent pretty easily. Comes down to a point here with kind of that chiseled edge that is indicative of the Classic Pens logo. The cap band says Classic LB3 Jupiter and then 038 of 100, and then the logo here. So, uh, and these are in, I believe these are a silver. I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm sorry. You'll have to check the, uh, the, the written show notes to see exactly what the material on this is, I but I believe it's sterling silver. The barrel of the pen tapers down. You've got another ring here and then a long rounded end finial. So the pen uncaps with about one or about three quarters of a turn actually. And that's because they have these kind of block threads, these big chunky threads, very similar to what you find on a lot of the Franklin Kristoff pens. So that's, that's nice. There's another silver ring here and a relatively slender section that tapers down a little bit toward a flare. 
The pen is a cartridge converter pen. It is a standard international cartridge and converter. The tenon on the section is metal though, so no, uh, no, <laughs> no eyedroppering this one, unfortunately. And then comes with a nice converter, but it is a standard international converter. And then we come to the nib. Now, the nib is an 18 karat gold nib. It's bicolor nib gold with the, sil the classic pens logo in silver and a little accent around the nib. It's really quite a nice nib and uh, very, very smooth. We'll get to that when we get to the writing. Has a plas what looks like a plastic feed here. And if I had to guess based on the shape of the feed, I'm going to say this is probably a nib made by A.G. Bach. But in speaking with Andy, I'm fairly certain that they made these kind of to preference because some of the early ones had problems with, uh, with low-level ink starvation if you don't write seven or eight pages. Uh, he said they went back and they corrected that, so the new feeds don't have that problem. Andy Lambro, the owner of Classic Pens, uh, he said that the new pens don't really have that problem. So all in all, from a design perspective, I find this to be just an absolutely stunning pen. It is a pretty standard cigar shape, but the shape of the pen is not what you're buying. What you're buying is the inlay, and that's all done by hand. It is all done, you know, it's, every pen's just a little bit different, and it's really quite a beautiful finish. <music> So as a writer, this is actually quite a lovely pen. It's nice and wet. In fact, I'll show you the wetness right up front here. So uh, you can see it, it's, it's going to be a little bit on the broad side for a Western style medium, but it's not too bad. Very nicely adjusted and just a whisper of feedback. So I'm talking about maybe a two, two and a half on my feedback scale. And uh, 
it just kind of floats across the paper, just a l- nice little bit of uh, a p- very pleasant feedback so you know you're on paper, it needs no pressure. And I will say that my experience thus far has been that Andy's assertion that the feed problems with the ink starvation have been resolved appear to be true in my case. I've used this pen quite a bit over the last several weeks and I haven't had any problems at all with it. So it's really been quite lovely. Um, it does tend to be just a touch sensitive. So it'll, I'll get a bit of a hard start if I rotate the, the barrel of the pen too much. I don't run into it that often and it's really not much of a problem, but it is something to be aware of. For reverse writing, it actually writes quite well. A little fine, a little dry, and just a touch scratchy, but really not bad at all. And overall, I have to say, it's quite a lovely nib. Now, there is just a hint of a bounce there. It is an 18 karat gold nib though, so this is not a nib that you would want to even try to flex. It's not meant to hold up to that kind of of, uh, work. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with the nib, with the way the pen writes, and with the way it sits in my hand. The balance is very, very nice. The section is a little bit narrow for my taste, but it's still, the balance on the pen is really nice. And while it could be posted, um, I find the balance to be off when it's posted. It starts to feel a little too long in that particular case. So this is a pen that I just don't feel the need to use posted at all. But as a writer, it's a really, really good writer, which is really nice. So when I review pens like this, it's always a little tricky because as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is not a pen you can just go to most websites and find. There are very few of them, they're hard to track down, and they are quite expensive. Now, the Classic Pens LB3 Jupiter is listed on the Classic Pens website for $1,995. I will tell you, I didn't pay anywhere near that much. I still have not brought myself to pay that much for a pen. Um, so. I got it for quite a bit less than that. I got lucky. This was one of the last ones the Classic Pens had in stock, and um, and I was able to get it for a, a really quite a nice price. But I also bought an LB5 at the same time, so that's probably why. Uh, so uh, it's it's really a lovely pen. Now, is this a pen for everybody? Absolutely not. Now, you may not like the shape, or you may think that the decorations are a little gauche. Uh, that's not my, I love the decorations on this. Of course, I really, I like space a lot. So I like this pen a lot, but I also recognize this is one of those pens that just doesn't leave my house. It, unless I'm taking it with me to a pen show, I don't take this to work. It's just too nice of a pen for me to risk losing it or having it get damaged or that sort of thing. So If you want one of these, really your only bet of finding them is to find one on the secondary market. I generally try not to review pens like this too much, but sometimes they're just so much fun and it's in my collection and I just really wanted to review it, show it to you guys, show you what a beautiful collaboration this was with Classic Pens and Paul Rossi. So thank you so much for watching this review. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to head over to the written review at penhabit.com. Check out some of the close-up photos. Maybe look at the Inky Fingers notebook line. There's lots of, lots of fun stuff going on over at penhabit.com, so don't forget to check it out over there. And as always, thank you so much for watching here on The Pen Habit. Have a good one. Bye.